What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of The Sheehan Show here on Sherdog.com. And today I am running through the bets for the two one championship cards uh, this weekend. If you haven't seen my previews for these cards, they're up on Sherdog.com already and our YouTube. Uh, but today I'm going to be looking at the bet nods uh, and I'm going to be telling you who I am picking for each fight. And now I'm going to be telling you my betting pick is. We went through some of the picks I know for the, for the other cards, but... Now the lines are on, and there's some very, very interesting lines here, and uh, we'll take a look, obviously, at um, at who we're picking and uh, and what might what might be a a bit of value here uh, coming into uh, coming into Friday here with the two one championship cards. Um, let me start with one one sixty two first, and I'm going to look at obviously all the MMA fights and body. So there's eight picks here, and I'm going to give you uh, the eight uh, betting odds for it. So if you uh, look at the first fight here, uh, Reese McLaren is minus two twenty against plus one eighty Winston Ramos. Um, you know two. Very, very good strikers, I would say, who can also fight on the ground. As I said in the, on my preview, if you listen, there's a there's a lot of submissions on these two cards, uh, but there's a good few well-rounded fighters as well. And you could throw these two uh, into this, as well as being uh, two very good grapplers. I would say that, and the one thing kind of separating these two lads, I think McLaren is a much better striker. Um, and I think that's why he is at minus 220 here and why he is the favourite. If this was just the grappling ability of McCarran versus uh, the grappling ability of Ramos, it would be way more even. But I think the fact that McLaren has that uh, striking ability, in my opinion anyway, maybe in, in practice it'll turn out a little bit different, but in my opinion he has that, and I think that is the... Uh, uh, is the reason why he, he has the betting uh, odds in his favor here. McLaren is kind of a southpaw who switches, likes to fight a lot on the outside with that big power, um, with lots of variation. <sighs> likes to, he does leave himself open a, a little bit because he throws too much. And I just wonder if if you're looking at, uh, at Ramos here and thinking maybe he'd be able to get the fight to the ground and get the submission, does the fact that he kind of leaves himself open and throws too much Will that lead to him getting taken down? Possibly, I, I think it, you know it, there's a chance of it. There's absolutely a chance of that here. Um, but McLaren himself is a very, very good double leg and on the ground. In uh, I mentioned in the preview, very methodical and very, very good uh, on top. Ramos is very good on top as well. Great head pressure, lovely ground and pound, and very good to take the back. If I was to bet on someone to get the submission, it'd probably be uh, with St. Hamas here. Um, but. He'll have to get it there first, um, and he'll have to get through the striking, I suppose, before all of that to to uh, to even win it. Now, I think this is a relatively even fight, and you look at those betting lines. I think it is the betting lines are a little bit wider than I would have expected, if I'm being honest. But still, I still think I'll go for East McLaren there at minus 220. I think he his striking will be superior and he will win the fight because of it. And I think they might... You know, them it might be evened out on the ground. So I'm I'm going for... Uh, I'm going for the favourite there, Reese McLaren at minus 220. Closest, uh, I believe, and maybe there's one as close, but one of the closest fights on the card is uh, Alex Silva, who's plus 100 against Gustavo Ballard, minus 130. Uh, I had a look at this earlier on, and they were both minus 115, I believe. So Ballard is obviously a bit of money has come in on him, and now he is the outright favourite. But this is, this is very, very even and with good cause. Um... My bet is definitely Balart here, though, minus 130. And the reason I give for that is, I think, look, Silva, I'd said lots of submissions in this card. He's 10 submissions. Um, all his stoppages, 10 by submission. Very, very good on the ground and very good um, upper body top pressure. And that's how he wins all his fights, really, getting the fight to the ground and that upper body top pressure. I think that is a very, very, very tough way to win a fight against Gustavo Ballard. Now, if people haven't, if you haven't listened to the preview or haven't watched Ballard fight, uh, he's a four foot eleven former Greco-Roman wrestle, wrestling Olympian. Um, 
and he's probably the most muscular 4 foot 11 guy you will ever see he's really really strong looking and Greco as well very hard to get down very hard to hold down especially at upper body you know Greco's all upper body you see against the cage you know the, back in the days of Randy Couture and others being really really good in the clinch and up against the cage and I, I would say the same would go for the, the fight on the ground when uh, Silva is like this old school uh, side control mount sort of grappler I, I think that'll work against lots of guys and I actually love his style I really really like his style but I think it's a, a horrendous styles matchup in that aspect um, against Blart. Now, Alex Silva does zero, zero, zero to stay on the feet. It's all about wrestling, 100%. He will not, and he will keep at it and keep at it and keep at it. The problem is here, I don't think he'll be able to get Blart down that easily. He might be able to get him down. Can he hold him down? Can he get him down? Can he hold him down again? I would say very, very unlikely here. And do you know what? I'm actually surprised that this line is this close. And I I, I think Ballard is a very, very good bet here at minus 130. Uh, it'll go to a decision. I'm almost sure that the lines aren't up yet for that. But if you can bet Ballard by decision, I really like that bet. I'm sure you'll get it at maybe, you know, even money, maybe maybe plus 150 or something like that. Uh, if the, the that betting odd comes out closer to the time, and I, honestly, I think that's a great, great, uh, a great bet. And I think Ballard here at minus 130 is a very, very good bet to uh, like him in this matchup. The next one is uh, a bantamweight meeting between uh, Lissandro, or Leandro Isa at plus 240 and Artem Balak at minus uh, 300. Uh, Black, another guy with lots of submissions, seven submissions in his eight wins. Trainer with Peter Yan, loves to catch legs for the takedown, will wait to get the takedown too and try to get the fight to the ground. Very heavy on top, happy to settle on top, lands a lot of ground and pound, uh, good transitions, good submissions. On the feet, uh, I described him in the previous show, I think is a defensive jabber. Um, uh, that's his kind of the way he strikes, keeps the hands very, very high. Doesn't throw too much, but likes to explode a little bit as well. He has that big flying knee. The other side of it, he said in, he has those body locks, those trips, those takedowns to get the fight to the ground. The BJJ world champion uh, loves to posture up, pass as well, arm bars, loves that mount as well, trans- trans- transitions just as well uh, as Ballard. Uh, throws a lot of body kicks in the kind of the hope of getting taken down, I suppose, and right hands as well. Um, not, I wouldn't say he's the best or fastest striker in the world and uh, I think that'll be the advantage that Balak has here that's why he's minus 300 as well now on the ground I think this is a, a fabulous matchup a really really great fantastic matchup uh, that honestly I'm not sure who will win it's one that I'm very intrigued by and one that you would say looking at it from the outside uh that it, if it goes down there, it makes the fight less predictable than maybe if it's on the field. I think if it's on the field, the Black will win it. Uh, as I said, he's a, he's a stronger, better striker, better counter striker, better off the back foot. Has just uh, more power, has more better technique, I would say. And uh, faster is the word as well. Watching a bit of East's uh, striking, it's, it's very, very slow. Um, and... Uh, I, I think at minus 300, you can only go for Balak here because of that striking advantage. If the fight went to the ground often, I think that plus 240 would actually be a very, very good price because I think it's in, you know, it's a plus 100, plus 100 fight there if it hits the ground like that. I just don't think it will. I think Balak's wrestling is strong enough. The one thing I would say might be the, the lack of um, big fights, the lack of experience maybe compared to what Issa has it in bigger fights may tell but honestly I don't think I will I don't think I will so I'm going to go uh, for Balak there at minus 300 not to give all the favourites here or anything but I have to go for him there another favourite I'm definitely giving is uh, Eko Rani Saputra uh, who is minus 280 he's fighting uh, uh, Mr. Fairdex uh, uh, Y2K at uh, plus 220 um, Saputra six finishes in a row I've, if you if you don't know this guy, if you haven't seen Echo Rani fight before, I would suggest tuning in for him and him alone. Not not him alone, but you know what I mean. Really, really exciting, massive power shots, excellent on the ground. D 
dips under very very good double like known for his jiu-jitsu and a really 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 quick finisher um, I think oh, I said in the previous I think what is it six wins in a row all inside the first round really really good fighter and uh a massively exciting fighter too. White UK is a southpaw, brilliant straight left down through the middle. Uh, big uppercut from the clinch. Knees in the clinch as well. Um, he hurts people on the takedowns, which is probably where Echo Ronnie could come up short here if he does. And I think that plus 220 price is based on that. I think Echo Ronnie would be a bigger favourite here if not for his ability to kind of land those big strikes on the way in from White UK. You know, doesn't kick loads, but has this lovely front kick to the face. And everything I'm saying there is is an elixir almost for uh, <laughs> for uh, wrestlers and guys who like to get in. Not necessarily that Echo Rani's a wrestler. He's more of a jiu-jitsu guy, but guys who like to get the, ground, the ball, the, the ball, the, the fight to the ground. I'm, I'm, I've been watching too much Man United recently to get in the ball to the ground. Anyway, uh, doesn't have great day, take down defense though. Good defensively on the ground, but I think Echo Rani's just a different level there and I would have to go for him uh, in that one. Um, right, let's talk about the MMA fights on uh, one on Amazon Prime 3. And I go from the bottom to the top here in terms of card placement. Um, I'm going to go for the underdog in the first fight, Noel Grandjean against Leah Bivens. This line has already actually moved. Um, when I looked at the bet, first Grandjean was plus. I think she was, let me just check here again while I have it up, if I can see it. She was plus... She, do you know what? She started out minus 300 and then she went to plus 3. Well, this, this is obviously an, an error here. She started out at plus 105 today. The, the bed nods are very odd for this before that, but no, it's a, it's plus 105. That's obviously a mistake here over in Best Fighters. Started out at plus 105, now into minus 105. Uh, and Beavens went in a similar direction, but still, at, at the time of recording here, uh, Grand John is the underdog. Uh, and I'm going for her. Look, the reason I'm going for her is I've seen more of her, to be honest. Uh, Bivens, I couldn't really find much of her. She had three uh, IMF amateur fights. Uh, what, from what I've heard, uh, asking around, she's supposed to be a very, very good grappler. There's a few wrestling videos out there of her doing a bit of wrestling over, obviously, in the United States. Grand John, I watched a couple of her fights. A judoka, there's a few judoka matches out there of her as well. In her one fight, she... she Tossed her opponent to the ground, really good ground and pound, and got her out of there. Lovely finish altogether. Uh, and I think she's dangerous. So uh, I'm going for her to win this one. Minus 105 in a close fight like that in someone's debut when they haven't proved it yet against someone who's been in there, had three MMA fights, um, and looked good in those MMA fights. Uh, I think that's worth taking the chance on that and going for her there. Now, that's, I'm literally just giving my pick there. I wouldn't be betting on him myself. Just because you don't know, there's too many unknowns, and you know to bet on something that unknown. Uh, it, like if I could get a look at a, a Bivens amateur fight, if I could get a look at a, at a lot of her doing, you know, uh, even a bit of samba or something like that, I could tell you. But having a bit of kickboxing, even I wasn't able to find it, so I'm going to leave that there at that one, and I'm going to go for uh, her opponent. Uh, next fight in. The fight I'm probably most excited about uh, on on the, the weekend in one championship, Jeremy Miado, um, Jeremy Miado, even who is plus two ten against Daniel Williams, at minus two seventy. Look, we've seen Williams now a few times. Great kickboxer. His hands absolutely never stop. He was in that unbelievable fight with Rod Tang. Lovely body kicks. Uh, he does get taken down, but is able to get back up. And is, is good at that for a kickboxer. Lovely jabs, high and low. Um, less kicks in recent fights, I would say. To unless um, you know higher leg kicks, more calf kicks, so he doesn't get taken down as easily. Less chance of, uh, as I said, less chance of a takedown. Big power in the right hand, and I think that right hand and the left as well, throwing the jabs and stuff, is what he's using more. He's becoming more of a boxer in mixed martial arts, which I think is very very smart. Miade on the other side, in taller. More, uh, more an MMA neo striker as they used to call him a few years ago, like like a Dominic Cruz or like a TJ Dillashaw, who we'll be seeing this weekend. Uh, fights out of the orthodox stance and races in with combos. Loves the uppercut. I, I compared the uppercut to the kind of the shot that Conor McGregor uh, throws and stands in a similar sort of stance as well. 
leaves him open for the leg kick. Throws, uh, I mentioned as well on, on, the, on the, the preview, if you're looking for a big knockout to, to knock out a, a fellow or, or a kickboxer, I suppose, his step-in head kick that he throws is phenomenal. Really, really good. It's good take down the fence. Low center with power, with little, very little setup. Um, and it works very, very well for him. Very quick, very accurate. I haven't seen a lot of him on the ground. Um, but I'm very impressed with what he's like as a striker. And uh, do you know what? I'm, I'm going to go for Miado. I'll go for Miado. I'll go for Miado here. I just, I like his style. I like his style. If you could see the lads up behind me here, maybe on the wall, you'll know the style of fighter I like. I like Daniel Williams' style as well. Don't get me wrong. I actually really like Daniel Williams' style. So this is a tough fight for me. I just love it. it give me a fight of the night, uh, bet, and I'll give you this one because I think this is going to be ph- phenomenal. I don't like going for the favourites all the time. So I, uh, based on that and that alone, I'll go for me out of here at uh, a plus 210 to win that one. But a, a great fight, a very, very close one. One that's not as close, maybe Shamil Gassanov, minus 450. Uh, against uh, Kim Jae Wong at plus 350. Um, Kim, very tight defensively. Um, he loves to push the pace. He's the guy who, if you might remember, he got knocked out very heavily against... Um, or not, He knocked out Martin Wynn very heavily, in fact, and he didn't get knocked out. Um, very, as I said, tight defense, that upright stance, hits very hard with the outside leg kick, a very quick... Uh, puncher loves to come into that range, draw you in, and then punch. Um, he, he, and you know, to, in, in the main event, we'll talk about that as well, where uh, um, where Andraj does that as well. But sometimes he fools he fools you into thinking he's waiting on the outside, and then when he gets in, he draws you in, and then he likes to land. You know, he doesn't lead much. He walks into range. And tries to counter that shot when he does get into that range. Look, because of that, I mentioned on the preview as well, and I'm sure people have seen it. Tang Kai knocked him out because of that. Very good in the so it's dangerous. Very good in the clinch. Lands a lot from the break. He's strong on top and and good on top, but he'd rather get up. And when I see that against someone like Gasanov, I don't think it's a, it's a great style to be honest. Uh, everything he does is looking for wrestling. I said this, and it's my new favorite saying. I think I've said it about a few fighters now talking on different podcasts this week. But I think he's a the, the phrase I use for him is a fearless puncher, very very strong on top because and because he's very strong on top because he's so good at wrestling because he's so athletic he has the ability to just throw everything and. If he lands on top, if he lands on the bottom, if he gets taken down, it doesn't really matter because he fancies himself having the advantage there. You know, we see it with Charles Oliveira recently, fearless puncher because he's happy to be on the ground. We see it with Jacare back in the day. We see it with Verdum. He'd throw a big kick, fall down, try to catch someone in, in a submission. Now, Gasnav isn't completely like that. But he's more a fearless puncher that he'll punch and punch and punch and take you down. Habib was very much like that as well. Uh, you know, Habib made a big sea change in his career before the. Uh, oh my God, his name escapes me. Uh, Will, not Will. Why do I think Wilson Hayes? Oh my God. Someone, please insert name. John, if you're editing this, please insert name here. The Brazilian who Makachev also fought. Oh my God. Like, I think of his name. Anyway. Everyone knows the fight I'm talking about. Before and after that fight, Habib fought very, very differently. And uh, I think Gasanov is uh, is that type of fighter where he, like, it's almost as if he based his game on, on the, the way Habib Nurmagomedov fights because it, it, it's very, very effective, uh, the, the, the manner of which he uses that so well. You know, and his... Um, his Athleticism. I mentioned the word athleticism already, but I want to mention it again. It's so, so good. It's so good. His ability to kind of, uh, you know, be twitchy and aggressive on the outside, but then on the ground to move around and be so heavy on top while being able to land big shots. Very, very good. Really, really good. Glacian Tebow. Glacian Tebow. No need to put it off. If I remember Glacian Tebow. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Sh- um, Shamil Gatson off there, minus 450. I'm going for him. And in the main event, then, um, you know, the reason I gave, I gave my John Lineker as my pick already for this. 
But ah, those odds. Lineker minus 260. Uh, Andrade plus 220. I, I really think, and I'll go through their what I think of their abilities in a second, but I really think this one is going to be one based on who can win the pressure battle. Who can control that cage. Because... Both want to do that. And that's what both are great at. Andrade, he's a southpaw, fast one, two, body kicks, tall, karate stylist, very quick uh, left hand. He kind of, I, I call it a switch left hand in the preview, but it's one where he kind of, he's 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 still leading and he's not switching, but he goes from like square to straight very quickly, really, really quickly. And it absolutely snaps the head back people and helps him to get that forward pressure because they push back when he pushes forward. And it's really, really good. A great shot and one he uses so well. He can be taken down, which I wonder will uh, John Lineker try to do in this, but he gets back up well. Lovely step in the really confident striker, as I said earlier on as well. Loves to come into that range and land in that range and counter people there. Uh, he'll be looking to dictate it. We all know John Lineker, the kind of, I suppose, a slower paced, methodical, um, forward going fighter. Loves the outside leg kick, loves to lead uh, with his jab straight out there and a lot a lot of movement on that front hand bursts into strikes you know he'll throw six strikes before even thinking about it loves the counter left hook if you throw inside and his hooks to the the body and head are absolutely phenomenal you know he loves to throw in trees as well does john lineker hook three hooks you know hook to the body hook to the body hook to the head or else hook to the body hook to the head another hook to the body leaves himself open inside and that could be an issue here with that extra set of a left hand that is possessed by Andraj. Uh, but he's willing to take that chance to hurt his opponents. Lands a lot on top because of that. Is dangerous on top because of that. But people look, people see him as a striker. And he is a striker. But we look at the fight against Bibiano Fernandez. He landed on top. You know, lo- loves the guillotine position as well. We saw that against um, Cisco Rivera back in the day. Uh, look, I, I actually think... If John Lineker can't get him out of there early, I think this fight is going to ebb and flow an awful lot. Uh, I think I'd be interested to see Lineker in the fourth and fifth round if it goes that long. I think Ramos is the sort of style and the, the sort of body type as well that'll probably go longer. Now, that's easy to say, you know, before you get to the level of Lineker, we'll see how that works out against someone like Lineker, but... To me, a very, very interesting fight. A very, very good fight. I'm, I'm, I'm reluctant to give my bet in this. I don't know who I got. I, I, I'll, I'll go for John Lineker. I'm going to go for John Lineker. Minus 260. Do you know what? It's it's not the worst underdog price in the world. Or sorry, not the worst favorite price in the world. He's not a massive, massive favorite here. So I think the, I think minus 160. Look, it's a fair price, I think. Uh, and I think, he will, uh, I think he will take that. So... Yeah, those are the betting lines for this weekend in one championship. Some very interesting ones there. Some very interesting fights. And uh, I'll be watching them and recapping them on Sherdog.com. So check out those videos Friday and Saturday over the weekend. Um, this weekend on, on Sherdog, obviously on our YouTube and all that. Please hit the subscribe button, the like button and all of that. Tell a friend. Leave your bet below. Let, uh, let's see in the comment section who you're betting on in one championship. Let me know if I'm wrong as well. And uh, yeah, I'll leave it there. My name is Sean Sheehan for Sherdog.com. And I'll see you all next time.